Well, hi, welcome to Chess Base Workshop. My name is Steve Lopez. I'm your host. Thanks for clicking on that link and joining us today. We've been talking about analysis within Fritz 12, as well as our other playing programs. This, this applies to, to all of the programs that we offer. Uh, you'll find the commands in different places in some of the older programs. We've changed the interface a couple times, but the ideas remain the same. The basic functions remain the same. What we're looking at here today, by the way, let me show you the game first of all. We're looking at a game that I took out of a correspondence database. This is basically a random game. I wanted a game where the players were not terribly skilled, so I picked a fairly low rated game. Notice over here in the annotation window that we don't have any annotations at all. There are no exclamation marks or question marks appended to the moves. There's no evaluation anything like that. By the way, I did remove the player names and replace them with initials. My intent here is not to embarrass anyone. Um, I just want to have a sample game to use. So I don't want to embarrass anybody by, by, by having maybe not the best game in the world up with their name attached to it. But anyway, this is played according to the database in 2001. It was an email game, an internet game between these two players, neither one of which is a wonderfully skilled player judging by the rating. Um, I have it in a database, and what I do, now last time we looked at the full analysis mode, where you get verbal analysis and you get diacritical marks and evaluation symbols added to the game by HS Engine. We used Fritz in that game. What we are going to do this week is look at Blunder Check. Basically, it gives you essentially the same information. But what it does, it gives you it, it to you in a different form. Instead of giving you verbal commentary, it gives you what I call old school computer commentary. The commentary is done numerically. You get evaluations down to a hundredth of a pawn, so you know exactly how much better or how much worse a particular move was compared to what was actually played. Some people like this, some people don't like it. I'm a huge fan of it because it gives me more information than just a a verbal comment. I know exactly how much better the preferred move is over what was actually played. Now the way you set up blunder check, first of all, this is uh, normally when you when you hit F12 to go to a game list, you this is your normal view, what you're looking at right here. You would click on the database tab. You would have the game highlighted that you want the software to evaluate and you click the database tab and go and select blunder check. It says check the selected games for tactical errors. That is the idea of what this was. What, what this feature was actually designed to do was it was a tool for professional annotators where they could go in and add annotations to a game, variations to it, and have a computer software program double check their work. That's what this was supposed to be for. But what this actually will do is this will analyze your games and analyze the main line moves, not just variations. So even though it says blunder check, this is actually, for my money, the best evaluation tool in the Fritz or any other playing program that we offer in the software. Uh, when you get the blunder check dialog, you have several things that you can select. And some of these we've discussed before, but we'll, we'll go over them again very briefly. First of all, side to analyze. That's in the upper left here. You have different choices. I have, for reasons I stated last week, I always select both. If it's one of my games, I do care about what my opponent could have done in the game. I want to see where maybe I slipped up and gave him an opportunity. So I do want to see annotations for him as well. The other reason for using both is because, and without getting into a, a, a huge discussion about hash tables, what, what hash tables are is whenever Fritz or whatever engine you're using analyzes a position, it will store that analysis and that position in something called a hash table and it will use that analysis later in its search. If it hits that same position again by a different move order, it's already evaluated it, it's already analyzed it, it does not need to do so again, so it analyzes much more quickly because it's able to analyze more uh, positions in the allotted amount of time. Some positions won't be analyzed twice. The analysis is already there in the hash table. It knows that it uses that analysis and jumps onto the next position and starts analyzing that. So both gets you more information put in the hash tables so it will get you more analysis, deeper analysis, better analysis by clicking both. Output is right under that. I'm not a real big fan of this. I think this should just be removed from the software. 
and it's really hard for me to describe this without showing it to you and I don't have a game to show you but if you click annotate as text I'll tell you what it does not do it does not give you text explanation of the moves some people seem to think that's what it does it doesn't if you select annotate as variations and I will show this to you in a moment but your output the better variations, the better moves that Fritz or whatever engine you're using will find will be shown to you as replayable variations. Variations where you can play through them just like you're playing a game out of a database, out of chess based magazine that someone has already annotated. When you get to a variation, you can play through those moves, then very quickly and easily jump back to the main game score, the main line of the game. Annotate as text puts those moves in but it puts it in as printed text not as replayable variations it's the exact same moves if they're just not replayable so there's no real point in selecting annotate as text I mean I, I fail to see the point of doing that now I'm sure some brainy mug will figure out a really good reason for having that option in there I don't know what it is I never use annotate as text uh, those of you who go way way back to uh, like Fritz 2 Fritz 2 used to annotate as text it used to give you its uh, it's better variations in an annotation box rather than as replayable variation. So if you're real old school and you want the software to do it the way Fritz 2 did it, you could select annotate as text, but I don't know why. Storage we talked about last time around. You have replace and append, and we discussed the difference. Replace means that if I select game 8 in the database, when it's done analyzing, game 8 will still be in the database and it will contain the annotations. If I select append, and at the time I had this game annotated, that is what I selected. There were eight games in the database. When the analysis was done, it put a new copy, game nine, in the database, as you see up here. And that contained the annotations that, that Fritz included in the game. So we discussed this last time around. This is exactly the same as with full analysis. Up here, you set your, uh, your various settings. We talked about threshold. I told you why I said it for three or for thirty rather, which is three tenths of a pawn. That's approximately equivalent to a tempo. So if you set it for that, basically you could set it lower. You could go as low as five or ten if you wanted to. But I don't know that a, a move that's one tenth of a pawn better than what was actually played is that big an improvement. It's cutting it a little too fine for a potser like me. But a tempo, I understand. So I set it for 30. That's a big enough difference that I'll probably be able to look at that analysis and see why that's a better move than what was actually played in the game. Time we talked about, basically, if you set it for 45, as it shows here, the program will analyze up to 45 seconds. When it hits the 45 second mark, it will then finish the ply it is currently analyzing before moving on to the next move. So it may analyze for longer than 45 seconds. It depends on your hardware. Uh, on an old computer, I used to set it for about 60 seconds, and there were times where if it, for some reason, got very deep into a search when it hit the 60-second mark, it might take two or three more minutes for it to finish that, that ply that it was on, so it would typically run for about four minutes a move instead of 60 seconds a move. Um, just play around with the, with the feature. I don't recommend anything less than 30 seconds. You get very cursory analysis, even on a very fast computer. There's no reason to... Uh, to uh, put a very low number there. Um, go for 45, 60, more if you want. Uh, and let this thing analyze overnight and you'll get some pretty good analysis. So I go for 45. Usually I go for 60, but in this case I went for 45 because I was analyzing multiple games. Depth is an option. These are mutually exclusive. Notice that if you select depth, you can't select time and vice versa. Depth, I'm not real fond of, but it's a fixed depth search, meaning if you set it for 7, when Fritz hits, uh, finishes analyzing that seventh ply, it will then move on to the next move. It will analyze that move for a depth of seven plies, then move on to the next move, etc. Not a big fan of depth. Um, there are some positions where Fritz, like in forced sequences, forced exchanges, maybe a series of checks, can actually analyze very deeply. And by setting it for a fixed depth, you're kind of choking off your search prematurely. Um, uh, and you can set it for a much higher number too. Keep in mind, you could set it for, oh, say, 20, but then there may be some positions that there are a lot of candidate moves followed by a lot of candidate replies where it may look for a very long time at one particular move to get to that 20 ply search depth. So you got to be a little bit cautious by using 
depth. I'm a big fan of using time rather than depth. I prefer to let the software kind of make a determination. Um, basically the position actually is going to determine how deep the software goes. The more complicated the position, probably it won't go quite as far, but it'll look at more stuff. So I go for time rather than depth. You have some check boxes down here that control the output. Write full variations, you want to check that. Um, if you uncheck it, it's going to give you the first move of each variation. This move is better than what was actually played, but because it doesn't give you the follow-up, it doesn't give you the remaining moves after that initial candidate move, sometimes it's going to be very hard for you to see why that's a better move. So I go for full variations. I want more than just that initial move. Erase old annotations, that's going to depend on whether or not it's an annotated game. If it's an annotated game out of a database, for example, you've got a game that uh, Lubomir Fatashnik has annotated from Chessbase Magazine, and you want to preserve those annotations, don't check erase old annotations. Uncheck it instead. However, in this case, it's not an annotated game. It doesn't really matter whether I erase the old annotations or not. There are none. But that gives you control over what's going to happen with old annotations from an annotated game. Training, I have unchecked. Um, I don't remember if I, yeah, I did have it checked when I analyzed this game. What it does is it will include a time training question uh, in the game if it finds a spot where such a thing would be suitable. Basically, if one player makes a big blunder, you'll get a time training question. Store evaluation. I'm going to show you two different games. Uh, and it's going it's to show you the difference between checking or unchecking store evaluation. Briefly, if you check store evaluation, what will happen is Fritz will offer you a numerical evaluation of every single position in the game. It's really cool, but it's a whole lot of information and it can be confusing. So put that in the back of your mind for a minute. We're going to talk about store evaluation a little bit later on and show you the difference between a game that has store evaluation and a game that doesn't. Check mainline, you definitely want to check that if you're having it analyze one of your games. What it means is it's going to analyze the main moves of the game. If you have an annotated game, whether you annotated it, someone else annotated it, you can select check variations. And in addition to checking the main line of the game, the program will also double check the variations that you or another annotator have included. If all you want to check are variations, if all you're doing is double checking your work, if you have annotated a game, you could actually uncheck check main line and you could select check variations instead. And that will just give you, it basically the program will go in and just look at variations of the game. If you check this in an unannotated game, you'll get nothing. The program will just go blip, 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 blip through the game and you have nothing when it's the same thing at the end that you have when you started, which is an unannotated game. So in this case, we have an unannotated game. We want to see how the players did, so we're going to check main line. Notice that you have to check one or the other. It's not possible to have, oh, it is possible. Sorry, I lied. You could uncheck both boxes, in which case you get nothing. Uh, so check main line is almost a must. Check variations depends on whether or not the game is, is annotated. When you're done selecting all of your options, you click OK, and the program will then analyze. I'm not going to show you that. I will tell you, however, as we said last time around, it starts at the end of the game and works backward toward the beginning. And a lot of that is because it, it actually helps the hash tables. A lot of the positions that it will analyze at the end of a game, assuming it's not checkmate, a lot of the positions it's going to analyze are going to be beneficial and useful in earlier positions. So it works backwards so it can put positions in the hash table and give you better analysis as it works backward through the game. Also, it's easier to know where you're going if you know, or uh, easier to know where you're going if you've already been there. And that's uh, another reason that, that Fritz uses that information as well. It uses the information of what was actually played in the game as well as his own analysis to give you evaluations of all the moves in the game. I'm going to click cancel. It's going to be like one of those cooking shows where they take the unbaked cake and they pop it in and they go to commercial, they come back and it's done. We've already analyzed this game. Using all of these uh, selections that I've done here, where I did not check store evaluation when I annotated this game, when I had Fritz annotate this game, this is what I got. Notice I have a time training question. It jumps right to it. At move 26, Fritz decided that a training question was appropriate here, but I'm going to kick out of that just so I can show you what Fritz's analysis looks like. Notice that we don't have verbal commentary. 
at certain places during the game, not every move is going to be evaluated. For example, 10A3, there is no evaluation here. Why? Because the best move that Fritz found was not better than 10A3 by more than 30 one hundredths of a pawn. Remember our threshold setting. So 10A3 may be the best move. If it's not the best move, the best move is only better by less than, th than the three-tenths of a pawn, so Fritz didn't show us that. That was a function of our setting. If I had set the uh, threshold to 10, we would almost certainly have uh, commentary to pretty much every move of the game once we get out of the opening book. Notice if you do have an opening book loaded, by the way, last book move. I think I have power book loaded, if I'm not mistaken. By the way, I do want to uh, flip the board around. Um, there we go. That looks a little more familiar to people because you've got black at the top now. But anyway, uh, knight f3 was the last book move. Um, I think I had power book loaded, if I remember correctly, which means that when black plays this, this is not a known move. This is not in the opening book. This is something new. And Fritz apparently found something better. If you look here, we get an evaluation of the move that was actually played. So after knight e4, the evaluation of the position is that white is ahead by 12 one hundredths of a pawn. That's the way Fritz 12 evaluates what you're seeing here. However, it's found something better. So since black moved, we're going to look at a different black move instead. So instead of knight e4, it suggests b5. And as we play through the variation, and we get to the end of it, we see that it's still an equal position, more or less, but black is better by two-tenths of a pawn, 20 one-hundredths of a pawn, which is what this means right here, and that Fritz found this variation after doing a 16-ply search depth. Looked 16 half moves, eight full moves ahead to find this variation. Why is this variation longer than eight moves? Because of what's something called selective search. And we won't go into that here, but in certain forcing lines and, and exchanges and, and variations of that nature, it will look a bit farther ahead. But after a 16 ply brute force search, it finds a move that favors black by two tenths of a pawn. Instead of this move, after this position, white was ahead by 12 hundredths of a pawn. Notice that if you take the difference, uh, this move is better by 32 one hundredths of a pawn, almost a full third of a pawn, and since our threshold was 30 one hundredths, that fits. And that's why Fritz shows us a variation here. It, you go out through the game and you find places where Fritz gives you an evaluation symbol. Black is ahead here. You see an evaluation symbol here, equal position. So you get numerical evaluations. You also get evaluation symbols. And as we go farther into the game and mistakes get made, we also find places like this where there is a question mark uh, where uh, white made a mistake. Here we have a double question mark, which is an outright blunder. In fact, this is where, where white really, really loses the game here. When uh, this gets played, uh, this is winning for black after this. And notice that black is ahead by a full seven pawns after this move. So there's going to be material missing directly. You have a, a variation here that ends with still not good for black, or I'm sorry, not good for uh, for white. It's good for black. Black is now ahead by two and a half pawns, but two and a half pawns is better for white than seven pawns, and that's why uh, we get a variation here. And then notice, as I said, somebody really blunders right here, and I can't make the training question pop up unless I close the game and open it again, but here it's, there's going to be a what's the best move, and we get uh, the, the opportunity to try to play something a little better. So that's basically what this looks like. Notice you only see things where Fritz finds an improvement. You get an evaluation of the actual position in the game. It tells you that Fritz 12 was the engine of the analysis. It gives you a line of play, which ends with an evaluation. And you get your numerical evaluation, which to me is more valuable than the verbal comments that you get in the regular analysis mode of the program. Remember that we had a checkbox. Actually, let's do this instead. Let me hit F12 and go back here. Remember that we have a checkbox in Blender Check that asks us if we want to store the evaluation. Let me show you what that looks like. Uh, you get a, a barrage of material. First of all, this is what the game looked like before. And now we'll show you what the game looks like after. With store evaluation checked, 
what you get is after you get out of that last book move, what you find is there is an evaluation for every single move of the game. Now this is valuable information. You can very easily see the ebb and flow of the game. For example, right here, with the last book move, it was a dead even position. White makes a move, probably not so good because now black is ahead by a quarter of a pawn. That's why it says minus 0 0.23. A6, now black is ahead by a, only one one hundredth of a pawn. So this is not as good a move for black as what might have been played. A3, now black is ahead by 13 hundredths of a pawn. Black makes a move. It's pretty funny because each time a player makes a move, it winds up being better for the other guy, you'll notice in this game. Uh, white makes a move, things are better for black. Black makes a move, things are better for white. But you get a lot of material on the screen here. For every move that was played in the game, you do get a numerical evaluation. That's what you see in blue here. And it's an awful lot of material. So it just depends on whether you want all of this or not. If you don't want to see all this, if all this ends up being very confusing to you, do not check store evaluations. However, if you want all this material, which means that if you really look at it, it does take much longer to go through a game, you can watch the numerical evaluation, the ebb and flow of these numbers by having every move of the game evaluated. That's basically how this works. That's, that's really all there is to it, uh, this particular analysis mode in Fritz. That's what blunder check is. It is not just for checking errors in analysis that you've added to the game. You can actually use it to get evaluation of every move in the game, as we've just seen. And it's old school, what I call old school computer analysis, where it does it with numbers rather than tries to do it with words. This is my preferred evaluation mode, my, my preferred analysis mode for games, because I really like the information that I get, and it really gives me a, a good handle on really what's going on in a game. It's up to me to interpret those numbers as well. It tells me, oh, after this move, black is better. I have to figure out why black is better. So it's a good exercise for me to look at that number. I have the program pointing me down the right path. Black is better after this variation. Then I play through the end of the variation, and I try to figure out why black is better here. So it's good analysis training for me. The program analyzes the game, and then I get to analyze the analysis. And that's what makes this such a valuable tool in all of our playing programs, not just for its 12, but in Ribka, Shredder, Hierarchs, all of them. It's, this is the most important thing you can do in a game, is have, uh, or with this software, is have it analyze games, analyze your own games, analyze the games of others, and then you have to figure out why the program analyzed it the way it did. And that is excellent, excellent chess training. There is another analysis mode, it's called Compare Analysis, and we're going to look at that the next time around, next week, in Chess Base Workshop. So until then, please have fun.